Hey there, it's Natalie, and I'm here in Bentiu in South Sudan. Today's March 28th, and I want to make a quick video because I'm seeing what's happening in Somalia. We're having a lot of extreme conditions here, um, and there's a lot of discussion about climate change, climate change, but we really need to back the truck up and understand that a lot of what is happening is because of ecological collapse, hydrological collapse, and carbon and nutrient cycle collapse. Um, half of this place is totally inundated with flood. Thank goodness for the UN and all the actors who've been actively, every day, excavators out uh, pushing back this dike to hold back the water. So all of this graze land is totally inundated and cows have no food. On this side, absolute drought, total desiccation, denuding of the land. Robert, I'm going down there. And um, desertification, that's what's actively happening before our eyes. Now, why um, I wanted to make this video is because People need to understand the factors that contribute to the extreme events that we're seeing. Look, tree stump, tree stump, tree stump, tree stump, tree, 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 stump, 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 stump. I am in Stumpville, okay? All of this land was a forest. It was a bush. It had an, a thick vegetative cover. And uh, that shaded and cooled the land. Uh, which made an enabling condition for plant growth and root systems and grasses. So here's a tree. This is one that is left. Lucky guy, gal. Um, let me just talk about the temperatures for a minute. So here it's about 2 p.m. 153 degrees, 67.5 degrees Celsius, okay? That is... 69.3 this is an absolutely not an enabling environment for any plant growth here's the shade of a tree just the shade alone of this tree sorry goat look at that that is more than 20 almost 25 degrees celsius difference for folks in the u.s Hundred and ten degrees. That is a huge difference. This is not an enabling environment for grasses and plants. This is an enabling environment for grasses and plants, okay? All of the trees that now remain as stumps in the landscape, and I don't know if you can see how unbelievably stumpified this entire, it's a graveyard of what used to be trees. These trees were sequestering carbon in atmospheric carbon, pulling it down into the soil, enriching the soils. Grass cover was sequestering carbon in pulling that into the soil. Now that has removed, the opposite is true. Carbon is being released into the atmosphere. The other thing, there's four stages of erosion. You have splash erosion, sheet erosion, rill, and then gully erosion. Already you can see here that the uh, splash erosion, raindrops coming and pummeling like jackhammers, has already started to do its work and now we have sheet erosion. When water comes, it sheets off, it pours off in, a, in, a, in just big even sheeting off of the landscape, taking with it fertile topsoil, making it less and less likely that we'll have viable rangeland grasses here, okay? Um, we have so much desiccation and heat. The, the, there's a saying by Alan Savory that it is not drought that causes bare ground. It is bare ground that causes drought. It is the, the nudity of this landscape that creates the hotness, the heat, the evaporation, the desiccation that precludes the growth of more cooling grasses and cooling trees and shade. Look at this, we have animals dying. I cannot even tell you how many animals I've seen dead in the last three days. And every day they're just dropping like flies. Look at all the plastic bags of this poor goat's stomach because there's just no food left. And at the same time, you saw we have flood. It's, for me, this is my version of hell. This is what it feels like. Animals just dropping dead. You know, so this needs to be restored. 
also please understand that there are many things that have happened here in South Sudan over the last 17 years since I've been working here. Uh, the CPA was signed in 2005. That activated the onset of millions of people returning to their homes across the entire country. They're building homes, which requires timber. They're clearing land for farming. They need energy and domestic fuel. This is not, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm talking about just basic ecology and physics and biology. So all of this tree cover was removed to support the growing towns of Bentu, Wow, Malakal, and all of these places. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse my hard breathing because I'm asthmatic and it's extremely dusty here as all the topsoil is just swirling around in the air. So on top of that, uh, Louis Berger in 2007, op you know, the road was demined and they opened the road from Nimole, Uganda to Juba. At that point, thousands and thousands of cattle head were coming in on lorry truck after lorry to repay the pastoral debt, you know, the cultural debt for marriage. And that activated again, a huge shock across the landscape because suddenly you had major grazing that was new. And uh, of course, you have to also think about the other things happening in the watershed, the Nile River Basin, the growing middle class of Kenya, Uganda, um, all of the tributaries to the Nile River that have been creating more development, more apartment buildings, more hardscape, more concrete. What that means is more runoff. All throughout the entire landscape, water is no longer infiltrating and it's moving into places like here in Bentu, which is the sump of this region, right? Sud of Sudan means swamp. This is the low point. All of the water that's on the other side of that dike should have been held higher up in the landscape. This water should be in Nairobi, in Kampala, in Juba, in all the places before it heads here. So um, it is hot here. Uh, the, you know, the vegetation is becoming less viable and there is a chance to reverse this before it reaches the point of no return, right? It can desertify to a point that it will not be possible to restore the landscape. But as of right now, where you still do have some, you know, semblance of soil organic matter that can hold the water like a sponge and come in with earthworks, whether those are swales on contour or half moons and earth buns and stone lines on contour, any number of measures, low tech erosion control to retain the water in the landscape because where water accumulates, life generates, and we can hydrate and quench these soils so that those ancient seed banks uh, from the previous, you know, previous year's grasses and seeding can rejuvenate. So this is not because of climate change. I want to be really clear about this. This this hellish condition is not because of climate change. It contributes to climate change. Climate change does contribute, but it is a system. It is a huge system of all of these contributing factors. And the good news is that right now we still are able to restore ecosystem function, repair and heal the hydrological cycles, the small water cycles, the carbon and nutrient cycles, and to you know, activate the biological uplift so that we don't have this situation. Uh, FMNR, farmer managed natural regeneration, strategic pruning of trees. You know, people need energy, but they also can, you know, we can use the limbs and, and branches of trees without chopping down the entire tree. Animal energy across the landscape can be reorganized in mob grazing and advanced cell grazing, such as holistic rangeland management methods, uh, to, you know, to bring this landscape back into production as well. So I just wanted to make it abundantly clear that the shade of that tree provides the conditions for life as opposed to all of this, which cannot. The word human comes from humus. The soil must maintain the same temperatures as a human being. The soil needs everything that a human baby needs. Water, hydration, shelter and protection, food, <laughs> carbon, nitrogen. So that's it. Um, as we move down this road, that's where we're really gonna see tons and tons of dead cows dropping like flies just before your eyes. So it's quite devastating, um, but I hope this is clear. I hope this is helpful. 
And just one more time to bring that point home. 65.6. It is about 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon here. Okay, versus the shade of this tree. Okay, 20 degrees difference. That is the difference of life and death in the soil, in the ecology, and for humans and for animals, okay? Thank you.